I wanted it to be like these people who just have no, they're not like career criminals necessarily. It's like, how do you go about it? It's like, oh, we got to get a mask. We got to get, you know, so it's, I really wanted to do this kind of like the day by day sort of approach to, um, you know, how, how an everyday person would be like, how do we rob a bank? Here, kudos on Marmalade, man. It is quite the fun thrill ride. Uh, I love that you're writing it, you're directing it. Where, when did you first land on the concept for this? And when did you decide you wanted to be the one to direct it? You know, the whole idea started God, years ago, probably six years ago or something. Um, it, it, the, the, the kernel of it all started when people asked me as an actor, if you could play any role, what would you play? And I, I never had an answer for that. You know, you always wait for scripts to come in and you're like, yes, I can do that or no, I can't. But you know, if I could create something out of thin air, what would it be? And that's sort of how these characters started uh, formulating. Um, you know, on top of that, it was like, okay, now I have these sort of characters, how can I put them into a storyline? So it was, you know, paying homage to the movies that I grew up loving, you know, like Raising Arizona and True Romance and Usual Suspects and, um, you know, Tim Burton movies and, and, and sort of like, oh, can I mash that all together? Um, but you know, one, one genre I've always loved is the, the, is Bonnie and Clyde, you know, sort of anything in that realm of kind of like lovers on the run. And I've always found that fascinating of kind of like, we're rooting for these people who are doing really horrible things for the most part, you know, even something like natural born killers, you know, of course you're looking at it like sort of in disgust, but they're the people that you're kind of like with, um, you know, the whole movie. So I was like, okay, can I take that sort of trope and sort of flip it on its head? So that's kind of how it all, um, you know, how it all started. I love that. And I mean, I totally can see the Raising Arizona Coen Brothers vibe, but I also get a little bit of Wes Anderson here and there throughout the oh. movie. And so I'm, I, that is something I was curious about was how did you go about deciding on the look for this movie? Obviously you just mentioned you were pulling a lot of references in the writing process, but how did you go about finding the look? Yeah. I mean, so much of that was, I actually, when I finished the script, I, I, I just, I knew the world so well, right? Like, cause when you're writing it, you have to become the heads of every department, right? You're the, you're creating the costumes and the casting and the lighting and everything else. So, so I, I, I knew it so well, but I was like, how do I convey this? So I created a lookbook that went with the script and, um, you know, luckily it's like, I look back at that now and it's, it's, it's almost identical to what's on screen, um, including colors and costumes, everything else. Of course, you know, you have to surround yourself with amazing collaborators who come with great ideas and you have to make sure that you're not kind of like, no, I want it this way. So, um, you know, people, people brought their A game to this and really thought outside the box. And it was kind of like, okay, as long as we're all sort of making the same movie, you can sort of start to start to blend um, thoughts together. But I, I, I guess it was always like this kind of, you know, I wanted it to feel like a nineties film, you know? And so that's kind of where the color palette started. Um, I wanted it to sort of feel kind of old timey and like a weird whimsical fable, you know, and, and these colors and this, these, you know, the, the tonal palette sort of felt right for that. It definitely had a very timeless vibe to it in how some of it felt modern, some of it felt, like you said, 90s. So I, I love that that mishmash that you had. Speaking of great collaborators, though, I mean, you have such a wonderful ensemble in this movie. Joe is very much the heart of it. What was it like finding the perfect person to sort of lead the charge on the cast? It was, you know, we had our work cut out for us. Um, uh, you know, I created these characters that have, you know, they all have a, a duality to them, right? And they all have many layers. And part of it, creating these characters was, can I create sort of a stereotype, a trope to sort of pull the audience along? And then, of course, without giving too much away, it's sort of like, can you flip that around at a certain point, get ahead of the audience and then, um, you know, have them question, oh, you know, I really kind of got duped uh, here and there. So part of that was, OK, we have to find actors who can really show us a couple different gears and are able to really sink into these characters and, and make them believable. Joe, I am just like a massive fan of his from, you know, he's early on in his career, obviously, but it's like he has such a sweetness, such a um, genuineness, such a warmth on screen. And that was like immediate that we knew we needed that for Baron. 
Um, I met with Joe and right away he just he just got it. And we collaborated and decided on the accent and sort of his look and everything else. So it's um, you know, just a joy to kind of like see and you know, for people to see him in such like a different role than on Stranger Things, which of course he's uh, so known for at this point, is um hopefully just gonna put him in a whole different realm. Yeah, it definitely felt far different from that and from even Free Guy, where he's still kind of the nerdy. Yeah. Totally, yeah it still felt totally different. So I love that you approached it. So who would you say in the cast then surprised you the most in terms of bringing something to the character that maybe wasn't already in your mind or on the page? I think people are going to be shocked by Camilla's performance of Marmalade. You know, I mean, she just like, she carries the film in a lot of ways and that's by design, right? It's like, look over here, look at her. You know, she has to be magnetic. She has to be pulling him along and pulling the audience along. Um, And so I knew, you know, certain levels that I wanted and needed, but when Camilla came in, it's like, you know, and, 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 you know, she's very early on in her career. And so I think it's going to, I think people are going to say, who is that? You know, she has this sort of electric kind of dangerousness to her, but she's very kind of magnetic and um, charismatic. So it's, I, I think it's, she brought this kind of, you know, she would do takes and every take was sort of wildly different and sort of really like, you know, in the pocket always, but like kind of really would kept me on my toes. So I knew, oh man, if we can just bottle that and put that on screen, that's exactly what it needs is this kind of like unhinged sort of uh, surprise, you know? That's awesome. It, it almost reminds me a lot of like uh, Juliet Lewis in Natural Born Killers or even oh, um, huge rep. Yeah. yeah. I had another one and my mind just blanked on it. So I'll just go from there. Uh, <laughs> but Alabama from True Romance as well in there. Yes. And like, you know, kind of trying to, yeah, sort of, again, like pay homage to those things to be like, oh, this feels familiar. And then sort of ramp it here and there and, and find your own tone with it. Absolutely. I love the way you, you go about it. So uh, given that this was an independent production, though, I, I am curious. I mean, you know, with something like a bank robbery in the movie, sometimes people want to lean into it and, and show it off. You didn't go that route with this movie. You went with the less is more approach. But I'm curious if there was ever a thought of having some big, you know, sequence to to highlight uh, the the robbery. No, I always wanted it to be how 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 it how it is now which is um i found that to be almost more of a challenge like what happens if you don't show it what what happens if you have a movie about a heist but you don't show the actual heist you know the heist is sort of everything surrounding it you know and so it becomes then well you know so many times you don't really see the real like prep for a heist, you know, I mean, you do in like giant movies, like the Italian job or, you know, something like ocean, the oceans movies and things like that. But I wanted it to be like these people who just have no, they're not like career criminals necessarily. It's like, how do you go about it? It's like, Oh, we got to get a mask. We got to get, you know, so it's, I really wanted to do this kind of like the day by day sort of approach to, um, you know, how, how an everyday person would be like, how do we rob a bank? You know, this is the way we'll go about it. And then to not show it, it's like, okay, then you'd show the aftermath of it. So I liked the idea of kind of cloaking that in, in a little bit of mystery. Well, it works really well, especially given the the driving mystery of the movie, I'm trying to avoid spoilers myself. (laughs) So uh it, it works very well uh one thing i did want to ask too was I, you've worked with so many great directors over the years and even recently you worked with uh michael bay on ambulance which in itself is sort of a heist movie and i'm curious oh, yeah. you know, what were some of the biggest lessons you took from either you know from any director in bringing to making your debut on this it's a massive advantage right that i've had like 20 plus years of working with all sorts of different directors you know from from legends like clint eastwood and you know michael bay and just these you know really different sort of um you know masters of their craft really and all the way down to like first time directors, you know, so you see kind of, I've seen sort of what works and what doesn't work, at least for me personally. And I've seen how people interact with crews and how they interact with different actors and how, you know, just what their process is. And, and so I've, I've certainly picked and, uh, you know, and stolen (laughs) from them along the way. 
I mean, you know, Michael Bay, for instance, is like, he's just ferocious with shooting. I mean, he's just constantly, he's like, let's film this, let's film that. Oh, look where the sun is. Let's like do that. And I'm like, oh my God, it's a big budget film, but he's shooting it like it's a, you know, like it's an independent. So I, I was sort of like, certainly took that spirit with me to go like, you know, time is money and we don't have much of either. So it's like, you just got to grab as much as you can. Um, and, 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 and you know, sort of, it, it, it creates a, a bigger film. Well, you took the right lessons away, clearly. I mean, again, I can't say it enough. You did a great job on this movie. Before I let you go, one quick final question. Many moons ago, you starred in a, a little, maybe unknown movie called Wedding Crashers. Uh, <laughs> I, I love your role in that movie. And, you know, Vince and Owen keep talking about trying to make a second one happen. And I'm curious, you know, do you have any thoughts on possibly coming back if they found a way to make that happen as for Todd? I've heard rumors. I've heard rumors of something floating around. Um, I I would I would I would love to jump back into that world, of course, you know, put the um, put the, the 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 Todd hair back in, you know. <laughs> Get going. Yeah. No, I, I would absolutely love to do that again. Yeah. That would be exciting to see. But in the meantime, I really look forward to putting the word out about Marmalade and, and hopefully see you more in the director's chair. I think you've gotten to a great start with this one and I think people are going to love it. So thank you, man, for taking the time. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. 